even promote my Facebook and all my other social media that I don't promote is still on freaking that I do promote is on silent. I'm not understanding why. But okay, as y'all seen, I just posted a video like a good hour, two hours ago, and I'm back with another freaking story time. I feel like I want to have a story time playlist. So if anybody want to know more about me, know more about whatever the feel I have, whatever I have, whatever experiences I've been through, what are my tips for going through that? So that's like my high school series, my you know. That playlist, whatever, I have two videos in that so far. I already have my junior edition, but I'ma hold off on that. But um, uh, yeah, so I'm coming back to you guys with another mother freaking story, mother freaking time. And in this story time, I'm going to let you guys know. Sorry for looking away, I was looking at somebody in this house. And in this story time, I'm going to talk oh shit. Okay, in this story time, I'm gonna talk about the time that my dad died. So a lot of people who may know about my dad or about what happened to him. Let's just say, I don't know how this guy is doing right now, and I really don't care to know how he's doing, alive or dead, truthfully. Um, however, my dad and I, we had, uh, my dad and I, we've always had like a not healthy relationship. Like, let's just say that. And it's important that every female has like a male figure in their life that's kind of stable and like, you know, emotionally engaged. Well, a better lack of words but you know that's just there all around like a female who uh, well, a daughter who feels like she has a male figure that she could talk to whether it's her biological dad or not or like an uncle a brother or cousin however my dad when he was around was very like manipulative and very disrespectful like with the way how you talk to people or in about people and so as a young girl i would like tell my mom everything like mommy he did this when he was hanging out just on the third like da, 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 da. like i don't remember exactly what happened but i'm sure he remembers exactly what happened it's still in my mom but i'm going off with a little bit of memory that i have from the situation and the result that i ended up having at the end of this little altercation or whatever and the last words that was sent from him on his part was Okay, so we were at this train station because I live in New York, so we have train station. And I was at the train station. Matthew, shut up! And I was at the train station with him. We were by Botanical Garden. So we have a little garden, a little museum of life here in Brooklyn. So I remember we were by it, and I, I think my shoe had fell on the train track. I think I purposely threw it, though. Like, I was having a fit, and I was just kicking my feet, and then my thing fell on the train track. So I was trying to go and get it. It was either that or my, or my little Elmo toy that I had. And so I was trying to go. And I remember like he hit me and he was yanking me so I wouldn't go and get my stuff in the train tracks. And so then I remember when I had got home, my mom friend who lived across the street at the time, I used to call her auntie, but she was not really our aunt. And I went over there because that's where my mom was. And I was like, mommy, he poked me today and then he was cursing at me. And then when I went, bro, when I went to my mother said, yo, don't you ever curse at my damn daughter. Like, that is like going off on him. And he's like, oh, fuck out of here. And he was like, you stupid little bitch. That's what he had called me when I was like five or six. I don't remember really, but I'm probably four or five close to dinner because I don't remember exactly what happened. But I remember those words coming out of this man who spoke to me my father's mouth. So I was just like, I know this motherfucker did not just call me a bitch. And then a little bit after that, like on the TV, I think American Idol was playing. And then like a commercial I came on, but it was really a whole song. And it was like, big girls don't cry. And I was just like, sitting there crying like, my dad just got me a mean name. And then here, so they're playing on the TV. My mom was just comforting me and my aunt. Because they're comforting me. Comforting. Com comforting me. In that moment of me being like five, being, being called a bitch for my dad. So... So yeah, I'm just a little ass girl, and I'm sitting here freaking crying like this guy didn't want to freaking say that to me. Like, and he cursed on my mom like that's not nice. Like I was butt hurt. And so after then, he wasn't really after then. After that, he wasn't really around too much. I would say, but like, I would see him every other time. He promised, oh, I'm going here. Always made promises, never came through with no promises. Not, I don't have trust issues now, but I just don't take nobody's word until I see it. Like, don't tell me. Just show me and I'll believe you. Because if you tell me, I'll believe for like two seconds and I'll be let down. So I don't take promises seriously. Because he did it. And so later on, we were somewhat cool, somewhat not. 
then for my 14th birthday, I don't think we were speaking at the time, but my my his mom, so my grandmother on his side, she had called and she was like, what did she say? Do these people have their cat on the fire escape? What the fuck? Their cat is on the fire escape. I swear, there's little white people in their blood. But, um. Overall, on my 14th birthday, a couple of years ago, I wasn't really talking to him at the time, but I was talking to his mom, so my quote unquote grandma on my dad's side. And so my grandmother on my dad's side, I had like still had a connection with her randomly. It was like, oh, it's my birthday, you know, da da da. Like, where's my birthday money? So this ran in my life on the regular, so where's my birthday money? She's like, oh, I can take you to go get your nails done if you want. I was like, okay, so I went to go get my nails done, and she took me out to eat. Um, for my 15th birthday, when I linked up with her again, she took me out to eat at Applebee's. That food was so nasty. Applebee's is not a bad thing. But that food that they had gave me, they had a freaking salad with pistachios with almonds. I'm like, what the frick is this? I just want my lettuce and a little bit of chicken. I'm like, what the hell? Like, it was the most nasty salad from Applebee's. I was like, no. I didn't really enjoy it. I had a little piece of chicken that I had in the day. And so then I was just like, oh, yeah, that's cool. So thinking I'm going to talk to her again for my 16th. Hell no, this lady was MIA. This lady started cursing on my mother like her son used to do. And I was just like, child, you a horrible mother in itself because you raised that piece of shit. So, um, it's not really my business to tell, but since my dad, like, when we last spoke, I don't care if he's dead or alive, when he, we last spoke, he showed his ass and was, like, cursing me out. I'm going to tell you the point where he officially died to me. Like, then off, like, he died tomorrow. Oh, my gosh, can we fly out to Canada? He still owes me a child support money. I don't care. You owe me money. You, if you're not sending me money to come out there to this funeral, I will sit in the back. I won't even go play my receipt. I'll just like, everybody will be sad. I'll be like, finally. Wow, it's official. Like, I just bought a new car or some shit. Like, you're dead to me. You're dead. You're dead. Your whole family is dead to me. Your mother is dead. She could burn on a plane, on a boat. She could, she's dead. Like, I'm not really a hateful person, or I don't care too much hate, but like when it comes to the situation, like my hands are clean, like I'm done, like it ain't nothing to do. I don't ever gave you more than enough time. Now you cross me the one final time, I'm about to tell y'all, child, this is real tea. And I'm just like, hell no, sir, you're dead to me, like you are. So. For one, he always bashes my, my religion, like he bashes Christianity. Mind you, he's the first person to buy me a, like a kid's Bible. Fuck, sir. Okay. He said he could wipe his ass with the Bible. I'm like, okay, thank you. That's not my business. You burn, you burn. Thanks for the little bit of help you took part in creating my life. But you ain't nothing important where you could disrespect my original father who created you to come at me sideways. That's not gonna happen, okay, sir? So, then, but I should've. So then, from that situation, I didn't really judge him too much, but he was still somewhat cool, like mending a little relationship or whatever. And so, I had gotten, no, over the summer, my guy, over the freaking summer, I'm always employed. Every summer, religiously, I have a job. The only summer that I won't have a job is this year, and not even because of Corona, because I'm moving into college. So I want to have the best hot girl summer I can by promoting my personal business, selling that, and yeah. So I was just going to be getting, having fun anyway this summer, going to free events, you know, spending some money, but not a lot, because I wouldn't have a lot, a lot of income coming in. But you know, I would just be having the time of my life, making memories this summer before I go to freaking Virginia for school. And so, um... My mother and my whole family, uncles, cousins, not cousins, uncles, grandmother, all of us here, sister, we all got into it because I told them about themselves. See, something that people don't like is you correcting them, but they love to correct other people. So, push come to shove, it was a situation where I had to call the police because, like, it got too hectic where mothers getting up on me, grandmothers getting up on me, bum ass uncles gaining up on me, little sister who ain't shit gaining up on me. All of them swear like they doing something big and bad. 
they take everything from me. They took my phone, took my tablet, took the tablet I bought with my own money. Like, trying to do the most to stop me. Little do you know, like, I, the reason why this whole situation happened was because I was talking to my father. Finally, rekindling with my father over this corona virus thing about. So I'm just sitting there like, yo, all this stuff is coming home. Like, if you know me personally, you know in detail what is up. If you're my little boo, you already know what's up because you've been hearing all of this shit since day one. But if you're my boo... <laughs> but if you're my boo, then you know what happened. You know who did it. You know what's up. Um, if you're my close friend, yes, and and I sure do. I and we're about to make half a year. We're all to be talking for half a year. Back to what I said. Back to what I said. Back to what I fucking said. Back to what I fucking said. Like I said. Um, if you're my boo at Quavo, at Quavo. Yes, so you already know what's up at Ashanti. You already know what's up at my ex best friend. She already knew what's up. So it was nothing for me to cut her off because my family's dead to me. Bitch, you're dead to me too. Period. Um, Tamia, Naomi, not Naomi. Yeah, well, we, yeah, know me. So y'all all know what it is. Zaria, y'all all know what the fuck it is. Like, y'all know what's been going on. However, I was on the phone finally. Like, my phone and everything got taken away from me by my mother then my uncle was doing some rah rah shit swearing he's a big bad wolf trying to defend my mother about what i was telling her and the rest of the family then when the police came because i had to go on my way to call the police because my life was in danger i went to go call the police and when the police came he was the first mother ever out the house oh my god you serious you would call police on your family your only family family means nothing let me tell y'all this the moral of this whole entire video Blood means nothing when loyalty or respect is not given. I'll repeat that again. Blood means nothing when loyalty or respect is not given. You can't expect someone to respect you when you don't respect them or their belongings. You can't expect someone to honor your word if you don't honor your own word. Stop being a hypocrite. Just because you're a parent, just because you're a grandparent, just because you're an uncle, just because... That doesn't mean I owe you any type of respect. Let's get that out of your mind. And especially when it comes back to Christianity, you guys like to use the Bible, obey your mother and your father so your days may be longer. Blah, blah, to blah, blah, blah. No, respect is to be given in earth. If I give you respect, I expect it to be given back because I work to earn that respect from you. So don't think because you're older than me that you're more wiser than me. Because there's people who are older who have the mindset of a three-year-old when it comes to spending, when it comes to relationships, when it comes to socializing, like you guys do not understand what it means to articulate yourself or what life means to be honest. So when it comes down to the nitty gritty and I know everybody's business, I could air it out if I wanted to, but I have enough respect for myself knowing that at the end of the day, we're still connected by blood. So I feel like if you know that I could destroy you and I will gladly do it because it will bring me happiness. Yeah, but temporary, temporarily like fulfillment. I don't feel like it's smart for you guys to cross people, you know, who's been loyal to you, who's been respecting you, even when you didn't earn their respect. So, the moral of this video, don't let anyone disrespect you, blood, strangers, a friend you had for too long, F that. I just tossed a friendship that I had almost for like four years now out the drain. Too bad, sis, because when I met you, sis, I was in a place without a mother and without a father figure present, and I still made it. So, it's like, don't let nobody treat you like shit. Don't make nobody feel like they could talk to you when it's convenient. Rah, rah. You miss me with that bullshit. Okay. So, yeah. I'm trying to lay down and talk to y'all. So, I'm going to see a float ahead. But, um, yeah. Don't let nobody talk to you like stupid. Like, don't do that. Don't, don't dumb yourself down for someone else's principles or their rules or whatever they have to say about you. Because that's bullshit. So the part where my dad officially died, like before he entered the grave to me, let me tell y'all. So I couldn't speak to my dad this whole time, right? I mentioned me always having the job over the summer. So 
So last summer I had a job. However, I didn't contact my brother who's over there by my dad's house in Canada for his birthday in July. My phone was stolen the first week of July, so I didn't have nobody number. I was commuting to and from Brooklyn to Manhattan without a phone every single day, except for the weekends. And so I didn't think to call my dad. Like my dad don't pay my phone bill. My dad wasn't paying to get me a new phone. Like my dad never religiously always checked up on me, but at the time, us talking was more consistent. So this nigga called the cops to come and do a wellness check. To come and do a wellness check, scaring my so depressed great grandmother, like out her boots. And then they're questioning for me, oh, is Mahil your home? And I'm just like, you said what? The police is asking for me for what? Like, what? So mind you, this whole like dispute that's been happening between myself and um, my whole family here was because I was on the phone with my dad talking about them. Like I had enough, like they were doing too much petty stuff and saying too much slick stuff and I didn't like it. So I would talk about them right in their face because that's how I am, I don't care, I can't be fake. And so I let um, my dad know what was going on, my mother got tight, she took my phone. So push from the shove, I didn't have my phone for like a good month or some change, a full month, so I had my school laptop. So mind you, I finally got my dad's phone number from my sister because my mother was trying to be petty and she gave my sister my phone, like my phone chip, so I had my number on it. And so my dad was calling her one time, she was like, oh, this is not me on your phone. Mind you, it's my phone number, so what is he supposed to think? Like, what you mean, it's not my daughter's phone? This is her number, what are you talking about? So I finally got on um, WhatsApp on my school laptop, since it's a Chromebook, and I was able to tell my dad what was going on. So I broke it down to him and I let him know I don't have my phone because my mother got tight and da 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 da. So from there on, that's when my um my mother came in the background and they started arguing per usual as they used to do when I was younger. And so then I'm explaining to my dad what happened. Then here comes my mixy sister. She's like, oh, she's like, what she said? Oh, let me go call my dad because we have separate dads. So I was just like, you only call your dad for drama, like girl, bye, like. We already know the tea behind your dad. So my dad confused what I said. He's like, you need to respect your grandparents. I'm like, what? I'm like, her grandparents is my grandparents? What are you talking about? The conversation ended in Matthew, watch your mouth. The conversation with my dad and the last final words that that guy said to me before he died was, and you know what? You're a slut. I said, I'm a what? He said, you're a slut. I said, beep, beep to the motherfucking beep. Bitch, you're a slut because you're on child, what, four, three, whatever. I don't care how many kids you got. You're the slut. Like, you at the end of the day, you can't provide for your kids. You can't even provide for your first one that you had in America that your family brought you out here from Trinidad. So I'm Trinidad in Jamaica. From Trinidad to provide for your first kid. Like, I don't get it. Like, you're, you're the slut. And so I wasn't hurt because he called me for it, but I was disrespected. And I take the disrespect more than I take the hurt or the pain. Or the, oh my gosh, why did you call me that? And da, da, da. No, it's the disrespect. It comes to a point where it's about you respecting me. If I respected you enough to tell you what was going on, he was so pissed at my mom. Then my mother called him up and oh, Mahalia lost her phone at school, so I'm paying for two phone bills. No, I didn't lose it. It was stolen. I've never lost a phone. Except for my very first, like my Samsung phone that I have. But who cares? It's a Samsung phone. But... Yeah, so like he was siding with my mom when she was explaining why she took my phone. Then I was telling my sister to mind her business because it had nothing to do with her or her father. And then this guy had the fucking audacity to call me a slut. Boy, I started going off. Like when I started telling Quavo, that's my, that's what y'all need to know. My little boo name is Quavo. So I was telling Quavo, I was like, yo, I was like, this nigga did not just fucking call me a slut. Like you weren't there for my first period. You weren't there to see me have like my first boyfriend or whatever. You weren't there to see me. You didn't know about my first kiss. You didn't do like you've never been a father. Like you've never bought me pads before. Like nigga, you're the slut. Like you are you're having kids friendly. Like you could afford them. Like you can't afford this one. That's why your child support's still racking up. Like how dare you call me a slut? Like your mother's a slut for having you. Like my grandmother on my dad's side is a slut and I would say some things about this grandmother on this side but this is not the time nor the place to do it but if not, when the time comes y'all will get the real tea on everybody it will actually be in the book so yeah, while all this crap is going on all the family turned against me all the family ended up turning against each other 
Ciao, y'all gonna get this in a juicy book. So y'all better be sure to cop that book when it comes out. I'll be letting y'all know what drops I'm on the book and everything. Cause child, y'all gonna gag when y'all read this book. And it's not gonna be like a regular long lengthy page. It's gonna be as if you're reading a script. Cause my life is literally a movie. So yeah, the time my dad died was the moment when he called me a slut. And that was the very first time I cursed my dad out too. Cause like when he said that to me, Y'all, I went the hell off. I said, yeah, I may be a slut, but I'm a slut without you. So I've grown up without you there. So I'm a pretty good slut, you know? I said, those kids that you have up there, please don't kill them or yourself because you'll be really going to jail. Now you're really going to suffer in your external, I mean. Yeah, I said, you will really suffer in life beyond this realm. So I wouldn't suggest you do that. He's like, yeah, you're so grown, little girl. You laughed at me when I was raped. Yep, he was also raped by his uncle and his mom didn't believe him or she didn't care. So therefore, that's why my father also has this big up boiled in hate towards people who are on the LGBTQ plus like spectrum. Like he hates gay people because he was unwittingly basically gay, like raped. So he thinks that's like, I hate all the gays. No, if anybody he should hate his ain't shit slut mother who let that happen to him and didn't believe him. So, yeah, that's the tea. That's the tea. That man is dead to me. Corey Ramsey, if you're watching this video, Corey Ramsey, if you're, if you ever click on this or if you ever happen to go back on Facebook and you look at my channel, fuck you. Like, straight like that. That's what I said. That's what I meant. Honor your father and your mother so that your days will be long. I honor who honors me. That's it. Because at the end of the day, the Bible is based on perception and how you imply it and how you obey it in your own way i'm a full christian i got baptized the 25th of this month will make four years since i've been baptized and it's been hell of a ride but it's been pretty rewarding so i'm proud of myself for that um so yeah be four years since i've been born again on the 22nd of may and I just like know what it means to forgive and forget and I forgave him as much as I possibly can and I forgave him even in times when he shouldn't so him calling me a slut was like officially him in the casket for me and like he's a dead man walking like dead like I let him know as well like my kids like my child that I will have in the future and my husband will know about you forever as a bum like if I were to compare my dad to the boy who I'm talking to now they're two completely different people. And I appreciate that on my end for me choosing to deal with a boy who respects me enough to not ever even, like, if we're having a little petty argument, to call me out my name. So if I were to compare Quavo, I almost said his real name. If I were to compare Quavo with Corey. Matthew, leave it real quick. I'm ending the video. Leave it real quick. Shut up. So if I were to compare Quavo with Corey being my dad. Quavo hands down. Let me say the top five stuff that I noticed about him. Like I like that he's one a protector. Two that he's a hustler. Like by any means necessary he's gonna get it. Three he respects me. Like you know, you know, like he's never called me out my name. And if he called me out my name, he ain't say it to my face. He ain't say it over a damn streak and he ain't say it over FaceTime. Um, I like his mannerism, like I feel like if I were to bring him home, but I would never bring him to this family. They don't ever need to meet him in real freaking life. The person out of my family who would probably meet him is my aunt in Virginia. And fifth is that he knows how to control himself. And I feel like he's a protector, so with him being a protector, I'm automatic I feel safe with him rather than I would with my own blood dad. So that's embarrassing, Corey. You should feel that about that. And from now on I'm not calling him my dad, that's Corey, like I call him by his name. And things about my dad is one, he's a manipulator. He's a lost soul. Um, I would say he's a quote unquote protector, but not really. Cause if you want to talk about spiritually protecting, I guess with like obia and like voodoo and stuff like that. Whatever. I don't know if that's even true. Fourth, I guess that he's a good confidence builder. Not really, but you know, oh, you have to protect your spirit, you know, big energies and you know, blah blah blah. Shut the fuck up. That's the only four things I can say about that man. Thoughts on that man? Trash. I'm not talking about that man. Tell me why. My mother just also said, like, last week that he ended up calling her. Trying to talk to me. What you trying to talk to me for, sweetheart? 
why you didn't call my mom and try to talk to me then before the last time you called the fucking police to my house? Like, was your phone not working then? Child, that's the T, and that is the end of the story time on the time my father died. Um, moral of the story is, even if you're a boy watching this, don't let your mother disrespect you or down talk because mothers are the biggest heart manipulators or breakers or mind efforts too because they swear oh i carried you for nine months okay and i've had to carry your ignorance and your intolerance and you yelling at people who's just doing their job forever so don't think that mothers aren't guilty as well fathers and mothers are just as ain't shit depending on how they act and how they treat you so yeah just don't forget that at the end of the day when your parents die because their time is going to be up soon i mean it's sad that a lot of young black males are dying at a quicker rate than everybody else is in the freaking world but your parents are gonna eventually have to be buried by you one day and so just keep in in your memory in the back of your scully and your scalotti in your brain you know how they used to treat you and what they used to say and you decide if you even want to be present for that final resting day for them because a lot of them are dead before they even hit the ground but yeah at the end of the day i would like you guys to like comment subscribe let me know y'all experiences with your parents or like a family member who you're not really close to no more and just comment down below be sure to like this video subscribe subscribe to freaking scribe i'm doing more story times for y'all because i already had that jotted down in my book and i already created my thumbnail for it mm -hmm. so you're not going to see this head wrap in it but yeah so, so subscribe 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 like it up like it up tell me all little testimonials down in the comments let me know if y'all agree with anything i said and just let me know if you're rocking with these story times because i have a whole list of ideas that i would do with other people and when quarantine is over but just let me know let me know what y'all agree with how y'all feel and no i will not be believing out any of the curses and i hope he sees this one day before he dies so yes like physically but um spiritually mentally he's dead to me so yeah but um yes like i said be sure to give it a big thumbs up be sure to subscribe click that bell button because child i be posted all the dog on time all the time so yeah love y'all kiss